Welcome to Sharky's Gaming Controllers. I'm Sharky, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Belkin Nostromo Speedpad N52. This is basically a keyboard replacement controller for PC. Now, if you remember, I've actually done the previous version to this controller, the Nostromo Speedpad N50. So if you wanna check out to see what the prior version looked like, I'll leave a link down in the description and I'll probably be on the end card as well. But now let's take a look at its sequel, the Speedpad N52. So this is the packaging. It comes in this nice kind of display window packaging. At the top there, it says Nostromo Speedpad N52 Hybrid Keyboard Gamepad. And down the bottom here, it also says it captures N50 advantages plus more. More programmable keys, new 360 degree rotating wheel. And of course, it has a nice display window where you can see the N52. Looks really nice in that orange background there. Now the sides are quite plain. They've just got the, the name of the controller there. Same with the other side. This side does advertise how you use this keyboard replacement. So you've got this in your left hand and of course the mouse in your right hand. The top is just plain again, but the back has some more details. So on the back here, it shows you a nice close up there of the controller. Also shows you the software that you use to program the controller. And it has a bit of a description here. Built to, to conquer your enemy, the Speedpad N52 captures all the advantages of its critically acclaimed predecessor, the N50, and cranks up the juice with advanced options to dominate your game and virtually any application. It puts keyboard and gamepad functionality into one small and easy to use device, delivering more tools for customizing your game than ever. Using feedback from hundreds of gamers, our engineers designed the N52's intuitive action and versatility to give you easy access to your arsenal of deadly maneuvers. So start programming up to 104 functions now and watch how fast you become dangerous. It also has some key features here. An extra row of keys over the N50 with uh, presets for select games, adds to your arsenal and makes you more dangerous. Mouse wheel. Frags intuitively for lightning quick strikes and deadly maneuvers. 360 degree rotating mouse wheel with a switch. 14 programmable keyboard style buttons plus two thumb buttons. Turn you into a, a demon threat with an arsenal you deploy at your fingertips. Programmable eight way directional pad brings the action to you with eight on the fly kill views and instant diagonal control. Stable base, stays in place with an internal metal weight and maximum contact rubber foot pad, no matter how extreme your playing gets. Adjustable, removable left hand rest, adjustable to two positions or comes off to provide max comfort for any size grip. Three LED status, lets you quick check which of the three shift states is active. Includes Nostromo array software, superior performance tools, up to 104 programmable functions, modify and save your made to order settings, personalize virtually any application. And it's customization tools, create set and trade profiles, download button functions from the internet, remap keyboard and access. Also shows the system requirements here and note this is an older controller so it only supports Windows 98, 2000 ME and XP. And it also shows you the contents there as well. So once you've pulled out everything from the box, this is what you get. You of course get the Nostromo N52 speed pad, you get the installation CD, which has the Belkin software, which will allow you to program all the keys on your Nostromo. And you also get the user guide as well. Now the user guide is full of useful information. So it shows you initially how you install the software there, um, going into making a profile, the different modes, how to remap buttons, creating macros, using a profile loadout manager and also shift states. And then it goes into a few pages of troubleshooting. All very useful information to help you get this up and running. So now let's take a look at the Nostromo N52 speed pad. So first off, this is a USB controller. You can see the USB connector just there. It's got a decent length of cable here, so if you're planning to set this up on your desk and plug this into the back of your tower, you should just have enough length to do so. Now the speed pad itself looks quite cool. It's got this black and silver design with some nice orange accents. And the orange, especially here where it says N52, really stands out in the black and makes it look really posh. So that's the top of the controller. That's the side, other side, the front. 
and the other side. Flipping it over, on the bottom here you've got this orange colored rubberized pad and this basically covers the complete bottom of the speed pad. This just adds a bit more resistance. So when you've got this on your desk and you're about to play on it, it's not going to move very easily. You can play normally unless you really push it, you're not going to move this. So you don't have to worry about it slipping out of your grip while you're gaming. Going into the functions, up the top here, you've got 14 standard keyboard keys. These are basically keys that are numbered 1 to 14, and they feel like normal gaming keyboard keys. They're very responsive, and they do have a nice sound as well. Now in the center here, you've got actually four arrow keys. These can represent WASD, so you can use it for your direction of your character. And of course you use these keys by just putting your hand on the palm rest there. You can use your movement keys and you can access all the keys around it. Now of course all these keys are programmable so you can set them to whatever you like them to be. Now just below the keys you've got a scroll wheel here. This is a 360 degree scroll wheel. So you can just keep scrolling it. It's got a nice kind of textured rubber grip on the top of it there. So it's really nice and easy to move. And it's also got very distinct notches. So if you want to be a bit precise, say you're changing weapons or something, you can absolutely do it because you can feel each of the notches, which is a really nice touch. This uh, scroll wheel also clicks down. So it gives you an added button there as well. Now on the side here, you've got a thumb button here. Now this orange button is quite hard to press. You've got to make sure you press it quite solidly. If you press it too shallow, it's not going to trigger. And you can tell because you'll hear that click. Now this button is usually used for something that maybe you don't use as often, like an alt key, or even using it to shift the cycles of the profiles, uh, which I'll get into shift states in a moment. Um, but you can program this to anything you want, um, but probably something that you wouldn't use as often. Just below that one, you've got a D-pad. Uh, it's quite a soft D-pad, and it is quite quiet. It works well, it works as intended, and you access this using your thumb as well. Another button you access using the thumb is the one down the bottom here. So this is another thumb access button, so you just tap it like that to access it, and in most cases you'd probably use this as a space bar. Now while you hit it right in the center, it triggers quite nicely and it's quite easy to trigger. If you go far to, too far to the edges, so this side and this side, you might find the button will get stuck. It's quite annoying when it happens, but you can unstick it by just pressing anywhere else and just re-triggering it. Now this won't happen if you hit right in the middle, but if you go too far to the sides, you might find the button might stick. And it is a bit annoying, so it would be nice if they had designed that a little better. Now just below this thumb button here, you've got three LED indicators. So this indicates which shift state it is. So if it's in its standard shift mode, it won't have anything lit up, but as you change a shift from red, green, or blue, this will change color indicating which shift state you're in. And I'll get more into shift states in a moment. But before I do, let's have a look at this palm rest. Now as it is, if you hold, put your palm on the rest here, you can see it fits quite nicely. It's got a nice slope to it. It fits the hand, makes it a bit more comfortable so you can reach all the buttons. But say you have a bigger hand and you don't like that position. Well, you can actually change it. So this palm rest pops off like that and you can change it into the different positions. So if you put it down into a lower position like that, now you've got a bigger gap there. So for someone with bigger hands, this will be far more comfortable and you can still access everything. For me, the top buttons are a bit of a stretch like this, but then again, I would probably have it higher. Now, if you don't like either of these positions, you can also just remove the rest completely and just use it bare like this. You will feel these grooves in your palm, but if you prefer it this way, this is a way you can play as well. So you just pop it back in, and clip into position and you're ready to go. So you can change it whenever you want or you can completely remove it. Now comfort wise, this is very comfortable to use. 
like I said, your hand fits nicely on that palm rest, no matter which position you want to put it into. And you can pretty much reach everything. For me, the only buttons that are a bit of a stretch are these top two. Everything else is within reach and can quite easily be triggered. Side thumb button, scroll wheel, D-pad, and this thumb button. So it's a very comfortable controller and everything is well designed so that you can reach it quite easily. Now the speed pad is completely customizable. So you can program all these buttons, all the different functions to whatever you like. And of course you can have multiple loadouts and multiple profiles as well. So how it works is when you first connect this, it'll have a normal state pre-programmed in, the default settings essentially. Now this will work regardless whether you have the software installed or not. But if you want to program it and customize it, that's when you need to put the Belkin software on. Once you've got the software on there, you can then start customizing your loadouts. Now loadouts basically are a collection of different profiles. You can have multiple profiles per loadout, and of course you can assign loadouts to certain games. And you can also tell the Belkin software that, hey, when I open this particular game, load this particular loadout. So you can really customize it to your liking. Now when you go into the profile settings, this is where it gets interesting. Because first off, you can program single key as well as macro. So if you just want to change one key to a single key press, you can absolutely do that. Say you want this button to be C key, absolutely just change it and that's C key now. And you can also do macros. So if you want, say, a multiple a sequence basically of key presses, you can go into the macro setting and record yourself a macro so that when you're in the game of your choosing, you can just press one button and that'll trigger that sequence. And then that's where it goes to shift states. Now shift states basically, this is where this LED indicator down the bottom here comes in. You can switch between red, green, and blue. So when you're in the setting, you have the normal mode, then you can adjust red state, blue state, and green state. So you can go there, make three different profiles for those extra states, and then come here and assign one of the buttons to switch to those states. So there's different ways you can do this. You can either just toggle, so say I wanna press this button and it'll toggle to red state. Or you can say a cycle, oh, I want to press this button, and it'll just cycle between red, green, and blue. And you can do that. You can also do momentarily. So you can actually set it momentarily. That means you hold down a button, and then in that, while that button's pressed, all the other buttons change. So this way you can have multiple profiles and a lot of action saved, and you can customize them to your liking. So if you have different games and you want different profiles, or maybe you have a game that has a lot of con controls in it, and you wanna customize them to your liking across multiple profiles. So you know, you know, when I'm in greed mode, I'm gonna do this. When I'm in red mode, I'm gonna do this. So it's very customizable in that way. Now the software is required to do this. If you plug this controller in, it will detect as basically a controller and you can use it as normally in its default mode. But without the software, you can't customize it. And that's where the unfortunate thing comes from because the software unfortunately only works with Windows 98, 2000, ME, and XP. It does not work with newer systems like Windows 7, 8, or 10. It'll, the software will install and the computer will detect the controller, but the software won't actually see the controller. So unfortunately with newer systems, you can't actually use the software, which will basically means you can't customize it. But if you don't care about the customization, then you can still plug this in and play it with games as normal. But unfortunately, if you do want to customize and program these commands, then you would have to use an older operating system. But overall though, it's still a very versatile and customizable controller. And even in its default mode, you can still you know, play a game normally and you just use all the default commands as what Belkin's pre-assigned to this controller. So now this controller is a keyboard replacement. So essentially it replaces your large side keyboard with a much more smaller, more compact device that basically has all your key functions on it. And of course you can customize those to exactly what you want. So essentially when you're gaming, you would have this in your left hand replacing your normal keyboard. And then in your right hand, you would have your mouse. So you'd be gaming as normal with all your essential commands here. And then of course using your mouse as well. 
This is a very nice system and it is a very comfortable keyboard replacement. It's much more small and compact. So if you need to take this with you, maybe you need to travel to a friend's house or you're going to a LAN party or something along those lines, something like this is much more easy to take with you. And of course it takes up less room on your desk as well. So if you wanna use this instead of your full size keyboard, then of course you've got it there ready to go. And of course it's designed to basically have all the keys around your hand. So instead of stretching and being unergonomic with the normal gaming keyboard, this just has everything within reach. In perfect distance, there's not much stretching, you can reach everything you need to. So these keyboard replacements are much more ergonomic and much more designed for gaming in mind than a standard Game Boy keyboard. But does this actually improve over the previous version? Like I mentioned, I've done at the N50 on my channel, but having a look at these two side by side, this is the N50, this is the N52. You can see they've changed the shape of it. They've added more buttons onto this one as well. You can see here there's only two lines on this one. There are three lines. And of course they've changed the scroll wheel as well. This was more of a throttle than a scroll wheel, where this is a proper scroll wheel with a click down. And of course they've also changed the end here as well. You've got an extra added button and they do have a different D-pad as well. They've also got this thumb button down the bottom there. And they've also changed the palm rest of it. You can see how this slopes a lot differently. When you hold this, it does feel a bit different than when you hold this. This palm rest has been designed to fit your hand quite nicely. So overall, they have definitely upgraded the N50. And in comparison, the N52 is a lot better than the N50. More ergonomic, more features and more functionality. This still had the shift states as well. And realistically, these both use the same software as well. So the same software used to program this, you also use to program the N50. But the N52 is definitely an upgrade over the N50. They have improved a lot of different, including the form factor. And like I said, the functionality as well. Having those extra buttons, firstly, extra rower buttons. And of course the extra buttons here as well really helps. It just gives you that extra functionality that you kind of need. So yeah, if you were having a choice between going the N52 or the N50, the N52 is definitely the better choice. But again, with both of these, they are both older. And unfortunately, there are newer devices out there that do the similar thing that work on modern systems. So that's something to keep in mind. Overall, the N52 is a great keyboard replacement to use. It works very well and it's very comfortable to hold. The biggest down points are probably this button down here where it just occasionally sticks, which can be annoying. But overall though, this is definitely an improvement over the N50 where it's added more functionality and it works a lot better and is more comfortable in comparison. So it's definitely an improvement. Of course, the next biggest downside is the fact that this does not work with modern systems. You can still use it with modern systems, but you can't use the software, which means you can't program it. So if you wanna use this with modern systems, you can, but then you just gotta use the standard defaults that are already assigned to it and plug it in and just use it as a gaming controller. But of course, with there being so many newer keyboard replacements out that you can actually use with this, there's not much really, it's not really worth it to actually go back and use this in comparison. You could just buy one of the newer versions. Um, so unless you're playing on an old system or you're a collector, there's probably not much reason to really get this. It's still a cool control though, I really like it. And um, Belkin did release another one after this and that's the N52 TE, which I'll do that in the near future. And that's the sequel that Belkin released shortly after this one. Um, but until then guys, uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, helps out a lot. Feel free to subscribe as I'll have heaps more gaming controllers up very shortly. While you're at it, hit that notification button and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to support the channel, then click the join button down below and become a channel member. This gives you monthly perks and the extra support helps me out a lot. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.